Hello, everyone. So today's debate will be about the banning of zoos in society. As the affirmative side, we will state our case that zoos are inherently bad, contain legal dysfunction that needs to be addressed, as well as provide alternatives with the animals and visitors in mind. Beginning with our significance claim that zoos are inherently bad, I want to clarify that they are bad for not only the animals occupying them, but the visitors who come to observe them as well. Most people who visit zoos do so to either get in touch with nature, as society continues to advance technologically, or they do so for entertainment purposes. According to the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, 93% of visitors agree that their families enjoy seeing animals up close at zoos and aquariums. And 94% feel that zoos and aquariums teach children about how people can protect animals and the habits they depend on. Yet if these places are conscious that these animals are dependent of the habitats, then why is it that these animals are held in inadequate human design captivity? These animals not only depend on their natural habitat for proper survival, but also for their mental stability. Animals who are held in zoos are commonly prone to mental retardation due to their living situations in captivity. OneGreenPlanet.org provides research exposing that behavior like pacing, self-mutilation, and sham chewing or rapid chewing repeatedly are caused by an absence of some natural necessity, environmental, nutritional, social, you name it. Locomotion stereotypes like pacing are thought to be a result of inadequate living environments, restricted space, or lack of environmental complexity, while self-directed um, behaviors are often a result of stress and anxiety caused by lack or excess of animals of the same species. Unfortunately, these zoos that are perpetuating a positive impact on the animals they have habitats for are actually a further cause to their downfall and capabilities. And these issues that the animals face can ripple onto the visitors that spend their money to see them. As attractions become even more in, um, interactive sorry, for visitors, their security is continuously threatened as they are able to get closer and closer to these animals who are commonly agitated and honestly in distress. And more often than not, this can be a recipe for disaster. This leads me to our inherency claim that zoos contain legal dysfunction that needs to be addressed. With closer interactions comes more exposure between the animals and their visitors. These extensive exposures could lead to health risks like disease spreading, as stated by riskandinsurance.com. According to the CDC, 60% of known infectious diseases in people are transmitted from animals. Animals attract, animal attractions can mitigate exposure to this risk by posting highly visible signage to encourage guests to wash their hands after petting the animals and testing their animals for diseases. With all of the different informational signs posted around the animals in the zoos, these signs advocate for the knowledge of these animals, but very little advocate for the cleanliness of, um, of their visitors. More often than not, people, especially children, will wait till they are ready to leave the zoo to wash their hands because they expect to interact with multiple animals. So more often than not, when these visitors come and mingle with the animals, they might have a disease. They not only spread it to the people they are with and their property, but also might spread, it, spread these diseases to other animals. This can be extremely problematic since it's already, since it's a lot harder to decipher these diseases in animals than people as animals in zoos have to wait to be tested. This leads me to our solvency claim that action must be taken to replace zoos with more moral and safe alternatives. There are various types of alternatives out there that truly cater to the animals. Wildlife um, sanctuaries, natural reserves, and wildlife rehabilitation centers are just a few organizations that not only focus on the state of animals 
and prepare them for life in the wild. They also strongly limit human interaction with the animals while still providing opportunities for visitors. For example, a booklet from ewildagain.org explains that wildlife rehabilitation centers is the process of providing aid to injured, orphaned, displaced, or distressed wild animals in such a way that they may survive when released in their natural habitats. It's centers like these that create a much more, a much needed barrier between animals and visitors. In conclusion, these animals don't get to have the choice of free will like we do, choice of free will like we do, yet we are the ones influencing futures, influencing their futures. So we can do their futures. So the least we can do is not continue to be a part of the direct and indirect problem, but be a part of the real solution. <laughs>